property training courses, business mentoring courses, Amazon FBA courses, Forex trading courses. How many times have you seen these advertised online? Chances are there was an Amazon FBA guru advertising on this very video before the video started. But are they worth it? What is happening people? My name is Robbie and as you can see from the title, I bought and attended a property training course so you don't have to. Okay, maybe not so you don't have to, but I'll let you make your own decision. Also, look, new microphone. Don't know if I'm using it correctly. Don't know if you can hear me any better. I have no idea. But the most important thing is, the channel is upgrading, even if I don't know how to use the, the new microphone yet. So before I begin discussing the property training course that I attended, I just want to clarify this. I didn't attend this course on the basis of making a YouTube video off the back of it. I attended it because I thought it would be a valuable course. I thought I may learn some things to help me build my portfolio and meet some like-minded people in the process. Making this video was an afterthought after attending the course, but I thought it may be useful to someone. Another clarification to make on this video is, obviously I have no affiliation with this course or the person running the course. I just paid and attended like everyone else. And for that reason, I'm not actually gonna mention what course it was, or who runs the course. This isn't an ad for any particular course. I don't want to promote the one that I went on and then find out that someone had a bad experience if they went off the back of this YouTube video. And also, this goes out to the man who runs the course. If you're watching this, no free advertising. So with that said, let's get into it. So as you're probably aware, I'm very interested in property. I completed a renovation last year and I'm currently on the hunt for a few buy to let properties to add to my portfolio. So earlier this year, I was scrolling through Instagram and seen a well-respected person in the Scottish property community had started his own property training course. Now, typically I wouldn't really entertain the prospect of a property training course because there's so much noise in this online training space where there's a course for literally everything. Everyone is selling a course it's actually come out in the wash that there are a few property trainers who don't even have any properties in their own portfolio. The difference for me here was I had been following this guy for a few years. I'd seen his posts about the developments he was working on, the portfolio he was building, the day in day out posts of him working in property. So I could confirm over the past few years that he definitely works in property, he definitely has his own portfolio and seems like he has the experience that I'm looking to gain. He doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk. I also know that the people that this guy associates himself with are also successful in property. They're successful property investors, letting agents, just reputable business people. So based on this, I decided I was gonna take the plunge. I messaged him on Instagram, signed the forms, paid the fee. So July comes round and I'm added to a WhatsApp group with 17 other members in it. They're all strangers, all random numbers down the whole list. And the first thing that's suggested is everyone is to send a short video introducing themselves, where they're from, what involvement they have in property at the minute and what they're looking to gain from the course. Right off the bat, this gave me a good feeling about the course because there had already been an icebreaker situation. Everyone chucks a video in the group chat, regardless if they are not comfortable speaking on camera, if they are comfortable speaking on camera, if they're shy, confident, everyone has to make their introduction, which I thought was quite good. I can't speak for other participants, but I feel this little exercise went on to make the first morning a lot less awkward. The other thing that I noticed from this group chat was the varying levels of experience in property. There was young people who had no experience in property at all. Tradesmen who had experience in completing renovations but on the builder side as opposed to the investor or developer side. People who had renovated their own homes but wanted to learn how to turn that into a business. And then there was the other end of the scale with people already operating successful letting agencies, deal sourcing businesses, successful portfolios and experience flipping properties as well. So this just reinforces the point that there's always something that you can learn regardless of where you are in your journey. So anyone who's attended a business networking event in any form knows how awkward the small talk can be. This group chat alleviated that completely. So on a Friday morning, which was day one of three, there was a short 30 minute coffee and networking period, which gave everyone the opportunity to meet each other before the course began. Then we got stuck straight in. Now, obviously I'm only going to give an overview of the course and the types of things that I learned while I was there. I won't go into all the details, the techniques and the in-depth information that we learned. This is part of this gentleman's business and I didn't go there just to plagiarize it and post it online. But this video might give you a rough idea if property investment training is for you. So we started with an introduction from the event organizer himself. He gave us a breakdown of what he does, his experience, the projects he has on his books at the minute and where he's looking to go in the future. We then spoke about goal and target setting, where you'd like to be in five years, why you're getting involved in property and it was interesting to hear everyone's opinions and targets and goals. Some people were looking to be able to spend more time with their family. Some people just wanted to make millions of pounds. So it just goes to show that everyone's targets aren't the same. We all have a like-minded goal of 
X amount of income from property or X amount of properties, but the reasoning can differ. Personally, I want 100 properties in my portfolio, and that's because I'm greedy. This was followed by a well-known and respected accountant who deals primarily with landlords and property investors. If you're involved in property in Scotland, you've probably heard of this gentleman, but again, I'm not going to say his name today. In the afternoon, we discussed off-market deals, how to structure these off-market deals, how to find the off-market deals, what kind of things to expect when renovating properties, and a few case studies from the speaker's own portfolio. We finished up around 5pm on the Friday, and as soon as I was out the door, my brain was going 100 miles an hour in the car home, and I was already looking forward to getting back involved on a Saturday morning. Saturday morning started off with some more networking, which was nice, because you don't get the chance to speak to everyone at the event in one day. I like making chit chat, I like meeting new people, so this was nice. Then we were stuck straight back in with more case studies, and a more in-depth look at renovations, how to source materials for renovations, how to budget for a project, and how to realistically come up with a figure that you're able to offer on a property after you've viewed it. It was then time for guest speaker number two of the weekend. This gentleman owns his own letting agency and also has a successful buy-to-let portfolio of his own. It was great to hear from another successful buy-to-let investor, to hear his story and how he got to where he is in his career. I put a lot of value in seeing how someone has got to where they are in their career. If someone's successful in a certain field, why not take that, manipulate it in a way that fits your goals and aspirations, and then you can move forward from there. If the guy speaking at the event can amass a multi-million pound portfolio, why can't I? After lunch, we touched on social media, how important it is to utilize your network and the people around you, and how to clean up your image online. I didn't really consider the importance of having a clean image online, but who wants to do a deal or invest with the guy who's posting photos of himself lying on the floor in a nightclub, out on pub crawls every weekend, or worse yet, 10 year old photos of you underage drinking at house parties. Don't worry, the bad pictures of me have been erased from my public profiles. Now, of course, this doesn't mean the fake it till you make it bullshit. It just means make yourself look professional online. There's nothing wrong with pictures of yourself at the pub with friends on a holiday. Even the odd stag do photo if you really want. Just try to avoid pictures of yourself passed out in stairwells, being sick at parties. And the completely obvious, try not to be a homophobe, a racist, a sexist, or any other horrible type of person. But this sort of applies to general life, not just your online profile. Being a good person tends to get your results in your professional life and your personal life, so try and be a good person. Following on from this, we moved on to negotiations. How to negotiate a better purchase price on a property, how to deal with estate agents, surveyors, potential buyers, and there was a few group exercises on negotiations. We would pair up and negotiate hypothetical deals and take turns being the buyer or the seller, which was also a pretty good exercise. Just because I'm looking to amass a large buy to let portfolio doesn't mean I might not have to negotiate selling a few properties at some point down the line. Finishing up on Saturday around 5pm again, my head was spinning. I was hearing ways to negotiate find properties and structure deals that I hadn't even considered before. I even found myself whilst eating my dominoes on the Saturday night, sitting with my laptop in front of me, scrolling through Rightmove just in case anything popped up that night. On Sunday morning we touched just a final bit on renovations, more case studies and what types of hurdles and setbacks you might come across and how to continue moving forward. Then we had two guest speakers. Speaker number one was a commercial property investor who actually owned the building that we were sat in for the event. Again, if you're involved in the Scottish property community, you will probably know who I'm talking about. He has a successful podcast discussing commercial property and as far as I can gather, he is the man you would like to speak to if you're interested in commercial property. So this was the part that really opened my eyes. When I think of commercial property, I think of large skyscrapers, hotels, huge office blocks or retail stores on the high street. But this speaker went on to tell us his story of going from buy to let to acquiring his first commercial property and how he moved from one commercial property to I believe six at the moment. Hearing how he did it from the start to where he is today made me realise it really is possible. And property investing doesn't always mean buying a flat for £80,000 and renting it out for £500 a month forever. He also gave us a tour around the building. Half of it was tenanted and we weren't allowed in that half. The other half was still in development. And he showed us what the plans were for that space, what his thought process was whilst planning it out and how much he stood to make on it. He was completely transparent with everyone in attendance, which is exactly what I was looking for when I signed up to the course. After hearing about the ins and outs of commercial property investing, the final speaker of the weekend was a business partner of the events organizer. His talk was a deep dive into 
raising private finance, joint venture partners, how to structure these joint venture or private investor deals, and how between them they've built a seven figure portfolio. This final talk, again, very interesting because eventually, because eventually I will run out of money. I have a pot here ready to invest when the right deals come to me, but I'm always gonna need to find some more money through private investors and joint venture partners at some point in the future. So with that, the weekend was over. So you've heard the overview and you're probably just sitting here thinking, was it worth it or not? In my opinion, yes it was. The weekend cost less than two grand and over the three days, I gained so much knowledge and value, which realistically probably would have taken me years to learn by myself just doing it on my own. Not to mention the people that I met while I was there, both speakers and attendees. For the cost of the course, if I put any of these strategies into action, I'll make the amount that I spent on the course back in one deal. Am I suggesting that you jump on a course for whatever it is that you're looking to build a business around? No, not necessarily. Always make sure you do enough research on the person running the course, what they do, are there any reviews online or a track record of this individual or the people running the course? Business courses in general get a bad rap online. There's so many horror stories that you hear, but if you pick the right course with the right speakers and the right organizers, these things can be worth their weight in gold and my mind has been changed since I attended this because I was skeptical before I went into it. Now I say they're worth their weight in gold, as long as there isn't an upsell at the end. I've heard of so many courses that cost thousands upon thousands of pounds to attend, only for you to get to the end of the weekend and be offered the Platinum Experience or the Gold VIP course or whatever sales and marketing name they want to give it. I've heard such things going for as much as $40,000. So why pay the couple thousand for an online course to find out you weren't even getting all of the information? The rest has been kept behind a paywall big enough to buy a brand new Tesla. Now the course I attended did have an upsell, but it wasn't a hard sell, it wasn't an extra course, and it wasn't pushy at all. It was the option to join the speaker's mastermind group, which is essentially a group that has a WhatsApp chat, weekly calls, and accountability meetings. And the purpose of these groups is to stay in touch with like-minded people, to hold each other accountable, check in with everyone and update each other on where your deals are, how you're progressing on that most recent development, and maybe even invest in deals together. I have heard good things about these mastermind groups, but I chose not to opt in for this one. It was a couple hundred pounds a month, and I just wasn't sure I'd get a couple hundred pounds a month worth of value out of it every month. But I'm happy to say that I wasn't pushed on it by anyone, no one directly approached me and asked if I was signing up to it. It was just the final slide of the actual course. It wasn't a case of, now you've done the beginner course, it's time to move on to the platinum course. All in all, I was very happy in my decision to attend this event. I met some great people, I learned a lot along the way, and another factor is, kind of gave me a kick up the arse for lack of a better word. It can be hard motivating yourself to go and view property after property after property, being rejected every time you put an offer in, dealing with estate agents, dealing with solicitors, and none of the deals turn out to fit your criteria. And the market is so crazy at the minute, it's hard to actually nail down a property. But the fact that I paid money for this course and also learned a lot from it, has gave me that little kick of motivation to actually get back on it, get my head down, get to viewings, and really go for it. I have no idea if this video will be helpful to you if you're considering attending a property course, but I hope if you're an aspiring property investor or property developer, hearing my positive experiences might help you make the decision whether you want to go for it or not. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it if you've stayed this far into the video. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week. Take it easy.